What is up, YouTube? We are back at it again. Lots of good news, lots of bad news, all sorts of news, I guess. However you want to put that. Falcon is running and driving. Got the trans cooler hooked up. It's just dangling here. That's fine. Will work for now. I'm going to take off the bracket and shave this down because the little bushing on the end of this linkage is actually still rubbing a little bit on here, so I'm just going to hack out about it. Eighth of an inch on the aluminum here to clear the Edelbrock housing. It was working the first time I put it in, but the second time I reamed dulled it, it got a little bit tight and I don't want any sort of binding on throttle linkages because nothing good happens with that. So that's first on the list. While those two bolts are off, I'm going to take the other two bolts off and give this carb a very quick disassemble cleanup. Get that dialed and ready to go. Uh, like I said, it works fine. I also completely drained the gas tank from the two gallons I put in in between breaking in the old motor or the new motor, rubbing the crap out of it, letting it sit and run. So, based on the amount of crap that I found on the fuel line down here, I don't know if you guys can see that at all, but it is filthy, absolutely filthy. So, I'm going to pop this line off, blow this filter out, and that was that initial startup running through the stock lines that were still on the car. The front half of the car is new, the back half is still old. Uh, we'll probably reline this whole thing at some juncture, but not anytime immediately soon. That's something that'll do once I get it up on the lift. Um, carburetor itself works, revs up okay, but it dies as soon as the choke starts turning off, which makes me think I'm not getting fuel on the idle circuits. If I turn in the idle mixture screws, they do kill the motor like it's supposed to, and that's all working fine. But just to eliminate variables, because I need this thing at least somewhat running, I got a very fun phone call today. I got the drive shaft back. So went and picked this up after work today. This is ready to drop back into the car. They told me about two week turnaround. They were dead nuts on two weeks. So awesome, good, fun news. I got the brakes bled. Rear end is done and in. I got a weird bouncy suspension issue that I still got to figure out and address. But for limping this around the block, I should be okay. Uh, I did realize I put the wiring harness in backwards. I went over the firewall. This is supposed to come up to the front and then connect over here. So I think today's goal is actually, I'm gonna try and flip flop some of this wiring around, get the wiring laid out up and over the fender like it's supposed to be, bridge these headlights and get this other headlight and turn signal hooked up. All of my other lights are working. My parking lights, running lights, everything else is working. The headlight switch is a little wonky. Sometimes the brights come on, sometimes they don't. Uh, that I need to adjust or replace that switch, I think. But if I can get the front turn signal and the other front headlight hooked up, then it should be okay to drive. If I'm ripping it around the block, I don't really care. I'll drive it with one headlight, but it's one less thing to worry about down the road. And the only other thing stopping me from driving this is the fun TV trans valve pressure cable, throttle valve, whatever they call it, TV cable to the carb. With the fancy mount that I have, this will go on the bottom side, and then I just gotta hook it up to the little connector that I already have on this carb body. So I will have to trim back the sheath and adjust this to fit, re-loosen up all these set screws and make the TV cable work. I do have a trans pressure gauge that I wanna drop in on the trans first as well for tuning down the road, but I'd much rather do that and make sure that it's somewhat set so I don't risk blowing up the trans. So good news, drive shaft is done ready to go in. Ideally, the goal today will be get this thing back together so I can take it for a maiden voyage shakedown run around the block tomorrow. Just quick carb rebuild, fix the throttle valve cable or TV cable. So clean the fuel filter, carb rebuild slash super quick clean, TV cable, then we should be pretty much there. Hook up the trans gauges. In bad news, I pulled up to the house today and saw this big old puddle of green coolant on the ground of my truck, which sucks. So I started looking around. I'm like, well, where's all this coolant coming from? There's nothing coming out of the hoses. The top of the water pump timing cover is bone dry. Paint is flaking like it was anticipating happening or I was anticipating happening. But I got a couple drops of coolant down here. There's a little couple drops of oil in the back, which I know is actually from these valve cover gaskets that are leaking. That one I'm not worried about. 
However, it's a pretty big puddle of coolant. And I'm like, where is this coming from? So I started reaching around on here, grabbed all the lines, those are dry. But if I touch the core of this radiator, awesome. It is leaking coolant out the radiator. So I will need a new one of those and I don't want to spend any money whatsoever on that right now. Season's almost over. I got about another month or so before I park that thing. Who knows? Uh, I will probably end up ordering a radiator because it is a truck and I use it like a truck. So even in the middle of winter, if I have the opportunity to, or need rather, not opportunity, but the need to pick anything up, that is what I use. So I gotta measure this at some point, take a look at a ton of stuff and figure out what I need to do to replace the radiator in this. Super, super inconvenient, but that's where we're at. So let me get jamming on this thing. I don't know how much I'm going to be filming just because I have probably an hour of daylight left. And we will update you periodically throughout the course of trying to get this thing running. Okay, so I pulled the carburetor off. That's good to go. Bracket sitting over here. That's good to go. I still got to grind this down. Like I said, I had to modify this a little bit from the get-go. Definitely going to have to take a little bit more off of that. And I will be a little bit more... Well, I won't be conservative with it. We're just going to knock it down so there's clearance. Fuel filter is completely cleaned out now. That should help with the, the re-bleed. So let me grab a grinder, cut up some brand new parts, and slap this back together. Now, well, since the carburetor is broken, I will go ahead and finish up the drive shaft. Here's the new one. If anybody's interested, I can post the measurements. Not that it really matters all that much. Check with your local shop. Make sure they give you the measurements that they want. In this case, they wanted the front flange or front yoke pressed all the way into the trans so they can compensate whatever the seven ace or an inch or whatever on the play. So this one, if I remember correctly, was 53 and one eighth inch from the flange seated in the transmission all the way to the center of the tail. So that's where we're at. Let me climb underneath there and see if I can get the front of this in and then we'll look at the rear. Hit the underside of the car and you guys will probably be in my way. I left the rubber glove on there. I also didn't replace the trans seal yet. But that's fine. One thing at a time. So on the drive shaft, this is a factory Ford front. So let's get this in here first. Like so. Pulled the excess of the glove off from when I put this motor in. Let me come around to the back. That's sitting pretty much where it needs to be. So I got that rusting there. I still got to cut off this shrink wrap that I didn't bring my knife down underneath the car. So grab the U-joints and slap this thing in. So I got the rear end jacked up. I'm gonna try and move this to line this up a little bit better. I usually like to have this going this way on the rear end when I slide these joints in. But, beggars can't be choosers and the trans is in where it's gonna sit. I could get a buddy, but it wouldn't be as bad. Separate the yoke again. Just yank the yoke out basically. and. rotate the shaft, put it back in. In this case, I need to make this fit like so. Like I said, especially with the end cap sitting this way, I get a little weary. All right, we're seated. So if I pull this forward, about seven eighths to an inch. Which is cool, it fits. And it clears the tunnel. I don't know what size this shaft was stock since I didn't have one to start out with. But I did go to three and a half inch. You know what I didn't check was how much crap is in these holes. A lot of mud. 
Top one in too. All that's resting. These are all things you should have done way before you go to do final assembly, but now we're in it to win it. started this kit of you you bolts that I bought for this rear end are actually uh, I gotta double check the other ones I didn't realize it till just now they are lock nuts so I just need to make sure that these are correct they're rounded on the top I don't know if this is gonna show up in camera because I can't see what I'm doing flat side goes down rounded edge goes up Side of this when I'm blind. Oh, I got those in already. <laughs> Just got the lowers to do. Hopefully, if any of that showed up in camera. I'll find out later. If not enjoy. I'll tighten these down while I'm underneath here, and then that's pretty much the end of the bottom of the car work. There we have it. Two weeks to wait on a drive shaft. About ten minutes to put it in. There she is, three and a half inches. They painted it all up. Used the stock yoke that I dropped off. Cut, balanced, custom fit. Everything works perfect. So find out before I tell you guys who it is once I get a couple miles on it. Oh, well, we got the drive shaft back in, so that's good. Done. Should work and spin okay. The drive shaft is in. That's good. Done. Carb is now retired onto the workbench. I was going to do it in the truck, but I'm not going to get to this tonight because I don't have the parts. So, carb clean tomorrow slash I might clean it all tonight and then just wait on the new gaskets and parts to get that back together tomorrow. Then, what else we got? I can't do the TV cable tonight because I need the carb hooked up with the throttle linkage. The only other thing I can do is mess around with these wires. Got a couple hours of daylight left, so I think I'm going to try and pull this forward, see if I can get everything at least hooked up and working temporarily. I don't know if I have all the bolts or screws for the headlight trim, rings, and all of that jazz. So instead, because these are empty, instead, if I can lay this out, hook a bulb up into this dirty corroded socket, try and relay out the wires, get it at least to light up. And that's a good day for me. The rest of it's just going to be final assembly tomorrow and then try and drive this thing. Playing around with some of the lighting, grab some of the extra parts I had laying around. 
I moved the wire loom. This is all super temporary, so don't judge me. However, I moved the wiring loom over this way, and I have connectors for the headlight, which I got temporarily just dangling, but as you can see, it is on. If I get rid of this, I have a working lower light as well. The back side of this housing is completely rusted out. It is held on by scotch tape right now, which was on there previously. I saw it dangling. I just realized how bad that was, but whatever. I need one light. But we have headlight. We have bottom light. We have working side marker. On this side, headlight, lower light, side marker. We come around to the back side of the car. This is ridiculous to me. But we got working lights working trunk light which is crazy didn't know that that was a thing i don't have any lights back here but i'm also assuming they're just not hooked up or the bulb might be dead um tail lights work side marker not working but jiggle the cord a little oh there we go but the love comes right back on so i gotta go through and clean up the connector there same thing over here so all of the electrical on this car actually works on the inside of the car, the only issue I have right now is let me close the door because this dome light that works is way too bright. On the inside of the car, this is super dim, but those lights are on. If I hit the high beams, one, my high beams don't go on, two, in the course of messing with this a ton, when the high beams are on, that is supposed to happen. So right there, that red light, which actually when I tap the dash, it kind of flares. So I think I just got a, there we go. That red light means the high beams are on. Now in the past, this has not worked on the outside of the car. Also my door locks are sticking, so I gotta, oh, and now I actually have headlights on. So, my guess is I just need to do some major terminal cleanup. But look at that. Awesome. Shouldn't take too much to get this on the road. A couple screws. Mount that headlight in. I don't care about the trim, the grill, any of that stuff at this juncture. I was not able to get the TV cable hooked up because the entire carb needs a dissection. So tomorrow, get the carb rebuilt, put back together, throw that back on the car. Other than that, should turn key start fine anything run better i had no problem starting it it was just a high rev idle issue that i had but the drive shaft is back in lights are kind of working i couldn't be happier in theory tomorrow's goal it is shorty little open dump headers right now so it will be loud it will be obnoxious but the there is no reason i shouldn't be able to at least limp this around the block a couple times See if I can get it going good enough to uh, try and lift this over to the shop, put it up on a lift, and then start playing around with the actual fixing of mainly the cross member and the exhaust. Those are the two big ones. And then also figure out why that rear end doesn't wanna bounce on the driver's side. Minor detail. We'll get to that later, but for starting with nothing but a shell of a car, I would say we are in pretty good shape. So if you enjoy watching, like, comment, subscribe, all those fun things, if not, Yell at me in the comments, that's fine too. I'll respond. I try to stay on top of that. I hate looking at my phone, but if there's messages, I try to get back to them as quick as I can. I'm gonna throw a carb cover over the intake just for tonight. I think it should be fine. It's not supposed to rain. And that's pretty much it. Have a good one, guys.